The Planet Man. The Planet Man. This is the fascinating story of Dan Tro, the Planet Man, troubleshooter for the League of Planets organization, the law enforcement body for peace and justice in the celestial world, whose headquarters and center of operations are situated on the capital of all the planets, Planaria Rex. From Mercury to Pluto, wherever danger threatens the universe, you will find Dan Tro, the Planet Man, fighting for fair play. In a moment, the Planet Man. When we left the crew of Earth's first rocket expedition, they were heading for a crash on the moon. We find Dr. Darrow, his daughter Pat, Slats, the engineer, and our two young stowaways, Billy and Jane, discussing their dangerous predicament. The sound of the complicated control mechanism makes the cabin seem like a chatterbox of confusion. And from the outside can be heard the mad whining of the lunar currents. We find them now as they're getting closer and closer to the moon's surface. Slats is speaking. Our altimeter reading is dropping pretty fast, Professor. Isn't there any way we can break our fall on the moon? I've thought of everything, Pat, but there just doesn't seem to be any answer. The extra power we lost on takeoff was our only hope. Father, I know you don't like to do things second best, but in a situation like this, it might be necessary. What do you mean, Pat? Well, what about using our remaining power to go into an orbit around the moon, as we discussed in our original plan? Yes, but what good will that do? We still come to the same end, except that the agony will be prolonged. Let's do it, Professor. we got nothing to Lose. Whatever it is, I'm game, Uncle John. Me too, Uncle John. You know what they say, Professor, where there's life, there's hope. It'll be a ticklish maneuver now since we've gotten into the pull of the moon and our power is limited. But if the rest of you are game, so am I. Stand by to maneuver. Pat, start the reactor. Yes, Father. Slats, check the radar rangefinder and make sure you pinpoint those readings on the moon. Yes, sir. I'll pilot. Now keep your fingers crossed. Heading 10 degrees starboard. Heading 10 degrees starboard. Cut the reactor, Pat. Cutting reactor. What's our reading? It's 63.3. We need a bit more, Professor. Hit it again, Pat. Reactor on. Are we picking it up fast enough, Slats? What's the reading? Not enough, Professor. We need a fraction more. Are you sure, Slats? I've got our heading way over, and our power can't last much longer with such a radical course heading. Slats, give me a reading. Slats, do you hear me? Give me a reading. It's 89.4. Six more points, Professor. That's the end of our power. I hope we make it. Steady, steady. Just a bit more, old Ironsides. There, there. Well, we made it. We made it, Professor. Good, right that's on the oh, we made it. Good. Good. Very good. Very good. Hey, what are we all so happy about? We're right in the middle of nowhere. You mean that we're not going to land on the moon after all? I'm afraid not, Billy. What's going to happen? Nothing, Jane. We're just going to circle the moon the way the moon circles the Earth. Just look at that view of the moon. What a break. So near and yet so far. Uncle John! Uncle John! Something is happening to the air. It's it's getting stuffy in the air. I know, Billy. It's the air circulator slowing down. Breathing will be just a bit difficult from now on since our oxygen supply is limited. Slats, where are you? What are you up to? I'm outside the ship, bringing up the lunar communications generator. Thought we might as well set it up and try to make contact with the Earth. You can't do that alone. I'm here, too. Uh, careful, Pat. Don't let go now. Pat! Pat! Slats, grab her. She's floating away. What? Quick, Slats! Uh, Slats, help me! Oh, oh. Help me! Pat, here. Grab my hand. Quick, now. Come on. Hold tight, now. Easy. Easy. There we are. There we are. Steady, now. He pulled her back, Uncle John. Pat, Slats, is everything all right? Yes, Father, thanks to Slats. I thought I was a goner. Don't forget you're out in space, Pat, and if you ever drifted away, we'd never be able to get you back. It's all okay now, Professor. We're coming in. Pat? Yes, Billy? 
Jane and I know what's going on. What are you talking about? Pat, we know this whole trip was spoiled because we stowed aboard. It's all our fault. Now listen to me, you two, and stop feeling guilty. It wasn't the best idea for you to sneak aboard, but it did happen. And besides, we could have been wrong in our calculations. The important thing now is for all of us to face up to whatever lies ahead. And I know that you two won't let me down. Never, Pat. Not us, Pat. All right, now let's just forget the whole thing. I wonder where Slaps and Father are. We'll return to Planet Man in just a moment. So, level off. Well, it looks like the first trip from Earth to the moon is coming to its tragic end. The good ship Constitution is in a hopeless orbit about the moon. The entire crew is slowly suffocating because the oxygen supply is coming to an end. Professor Darrow and Slats are in the posterior cargo chamber. Slats is apparently up to something. Why, why don't you go to the control cabin, Professor, and lie down for a while? It'll be easier for you to breathe. I think I'd better stay here. I hate to have Pat and the kids see me so worried and... Worn out. Slats, you've got something on your mind. What is it? Well, I, I've been thinking, Professor. I really haven't got anybody. Nobody would miss me. And you and Pat and the kids have a little extra time. Now, what are you driving at? Well, a big guy like me uses a lot of oxygen. All I have to do is to step through that port and it'll be all over in a second. You people will have a little longer. Don't be a fool, Slats. We're all in this together. Besides, if anybody goes through the port, it will be me. I'm the oldest... And besides, the whole thing is my responsibility. Now, look, Professor, I've made up my mind. There's no point in trying to stop me. No, Slats, don't jump. Don't, don't stop, stop me, you, Professor. You. I'll hit you. I didn't mean to hurt you, Professor, but this is the way it's got to be. So long, Professor. What? what? What's that? What's going on in there? What's that? We're not clanging anything. I thought it was you. Slats! Father, look out of the port! Quick! Boy, look at that! It's mammoth! Professor! Professor, get up. Something's happened. What? There's There's something next to our ship. Huh? Oh, my head. The ship. Here, help me. Let me see the... What? It's impossible. But it looks like another ship is next to ours. Let me help you, Professor. We must get to the control cabin with the others. I don't know, but now we'd better stay close together. Slats, where are you going? Just to get this fishing wrench. I don't know what's coming through that hatch, but I'm not taking any chance. Well, be careful and don't get too close to the hatch. Let's all be very quiet. Oh, Uncle John, look! Stand back, whatever you are. I'll... Oh. Look at Slats. He can't move. He's frozen in his tracks. Oh, Slash. Why, it's a man. What did you expect? A three-headed Mercurian man-eater? I am a man from the planets. A planet man? Boy, wait till the gang hears about this. Billy, please. My name is Dantro, the planet man, and I come in peace. I represent the League of Planets. And my mission is to bring all of you to Planaria Rex. Planaria Rex? League of Planets? Where is that? I'll explain in a moment. But I don't think we should leave your brave friend Slats in this paralyzed predicament. He'll snap right out of it with a shot of this ray gun neutralizer. What? What, what happened? Did I get him? Oh, <laughs> it's all right, Slats. We're all safe. It seems that we've met a friend. And his name is Dantro, the planet man. It's nice to meet a brave man like you, Slats. Here, let me help you up. Oh. Dantro, my name is John Darrow. This is my daughter and assistant, Pat. How do you do? And uh, I think you've already met uh, Slats. <laughs> yeah. And these two are Jane and Billy, my niece and nephew. Well, it's right. a pleasure to know you all. You see, we've really known you for a long time, since we've been able to watch your experiments. In fact, we've been in touch with this entire trip of yours. We've even learned to speak your language. But how could you do all that? We planet men have many devices which Earth has not yet discovered. And one of them is the cosmic communicator, 
which enables us to see and hear across the millions of miles of space. But why have you kept the existence of the League of Planets from the Earth? Where is Planaria, Rex, and why haven't I been able to chart its position? Everything will be explained to you in due time. What's that noise? It's coming from my ship. We must hurry along. It's the bogey warning oscillator telling us there are some unidentified ships approaching. But we can't leave the Constitution. Not old Ironside. Your ship will be safe in this orbit for a thousand years. We must not waste time. Will I get a space suit like yours? Will you let me fly the ship? I see Earth children are no different from ours. There's our last warning. Quick, through the hatch into my ship, the Planeteer. What adventures lie ahead for the Earth people? What will they find on Planaria Rex? Whose ships are those approaching the helpless Constitution? We'll be back in just a moment. But first, here is a message that Dan Tro, the Planet Man, wants you to hear. Tune in again for more transcribed thrills and adventures. Find out what happens to the Earth people as they speed toward a new world on Planaria Rex. Rocket millions of light years into space with Dan Tro, the Planet Man. The Planet Man.